Three, two, one. All right, Ridge. What's up, man? How you doing? It's good to hear from you, man. Good, man. Good to hear from you too. Yeah, yeah, man. So I'm, uh, I'm pumped to have you on this episode, dude. Um, it's been a minute since we talked. Obviously, there's a lot that's been going on, and kind of the state of the world has changed a decent bit since the last time we had a conversation. Yeah. Um, we were actually no able kidding. to see each other <laughs> and be in person last time, but now we yeah. are. So. Um, well, we see each other just virtually. <laughs> yeah, virtually, virtually, man. Um, so, yeah, man, catch us up. Uh, what's going on with uh, Tripping on Bricks and kind of how have you guys been? I know musically, like during a pandemic, it's it's been weird. You can't have people at your concerts, and so you have to do things yeah. virtually, and um, releases are different, and you don't have as much that face-to-face publicity. So tell me a little bit about that and kind of how you guys have been adapting and what's been going on. Yeah, I mean, I could go like hours about the music and – music industry in general and like how this COVID thing has made it pretty weird. Um, But like at the high level, obviously, you know, you can't have crowds anymore. So it's a pretty weird point for most people and most bands, I think. Um, Cause like there was, I guess if we're going to get back into like the the music industry things, like we kind of talked a little bit about last time, like Mm -hmm. the, the revenue for artists at least, in the last, you know, I don't know how many years is, is like shifted a lot towards, um, towards live shows. I mean, you're not making any money anymore off Spotify and like streaming cause nobody sells records really anymore. I mean, you can sell vinyls to like diehard fans, but, um, you know, you're not selling like the, uh, typical like store CDs, those sure. types of it's sales like anymore. So touch taste feel. It's like, you gotta, you gotta be there present for you to like gain. That. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, and Spotify pays like, um, like 0. 0.00 something, 0. 0.004 or something like that cents per stream. So like to make money doing it is pretty difficult. Um, so that has presented a very weird point for a lot of artists and a lot of bands. And at, in the early days of this in March, I was like, you know, what's going to happen here? It'll be fine. We'll ride it out. Everybody just be safe, that kind of thing. And then I started to realize the implications of, um, you know, a world where you can't crowd together. Um, So the whole industry has changed. It's like every, initially we were thinking like, let's look into streaming. Let's do some stuff like that. And I immediately nixed that as soon as I saw, like I started seeing big bands streaming and it sounded terrible. And I was like, if those people with millions of dollars can't make an iPhone stream sound good, like we're not going to embarrass ourselves. I'm just going to take this time and write like, so however long the pandemic lasts, I'm just going to write, I'm going to spend time in the studio. And we understand that like, eventually we'll probably get to see people again and get to go play live. But it's presented a pretty weird situation for a lot of people that were gigging full time. You know, like Mm -hmm. I, I actually felt kind of blessed that we were in the position that we were in because I think if we were like a level above where we were before the pandemic, we would have been in some like serious trouble because a lot of bands go on tour and, you know, get their record deals and get advances and things like that. And, you know, they're expecting a tour and album sales and all kinds of different things that are merchandise, things like that to pay back that advance and all kinds of things like that. Um, I mean, even, you know, sometimes even labels to pay for like a van, you know, like you have to pay that stuff back. So bands that can't play live anymore, like I have no idea what they're doing. And I actually think that we were like blessed to have not have been very successful at that point because, you know, we weren't in debt to any label or anything. And we could sort of just take this time to figure out what we're doing, but in a cool way, it's like leveled the playing field between, I mean, obviously like the A-listers are still able to just do whatever they want and get music out and things like that. And I think the chain smokers had like an actual concert that got them in trouble. But um, I mean, it, I think it's leveled the playing field a lot for like musicians at maybe like our level um, and those that are even, you know, a good bit higher up on the the chain than us, because if none of us can play live, then we're all just competing for listens online and sure. the playing field's leveled. So like, that's just kind of what I've adopted going forward is like write music that can compete because now it doesn't matter if we have the money for the production. Yeah, dude. Right now I've realized that it's been a lot of growth for a lot of musicians um especially too with like new applications you know say what you got to say about the application it's something that gets a lot of attention and that's tiktok dude um oh my I, gosh yeah yeah like so 
I saw TikTok in its early stages. For some reason, I'm really interested in tech and stuff. Like we were talking about before this, uh, we were talking about like streaming on Twitch. And I like, was like, maybe I could start streaming the podcast on Twitch. I think that would be really cool because you could get like community interaction. You could have things that are live and like, it's great for other people to go back and listen to it. But like, you can have interaction yeah. with the community right there. Um, but TikTok has done a lot of that. And I've seen it blow up a lot of musicians because like a yeah. simple underlay of a track on a video that gets a million and a half views on it that's that's a lot of eyes to a song and you it catch is. those people are like what what was that song like i i really enjoyed that what was that and they find out a new artist and that honestly that was me like one night i caught myself you know i was in that just the scroll yeah. motion for an hour or so just kind of going through it and just like what like this is the wild this is wild wow that person's really talented and it's been just interesting to see that because i know that's like that's something on a musician if it's on my mind i can only imagine how much it's on a musician's mind so what has it been like the application of that like the not just tiktok but like social media in general to kind of get your music out there in different formats not just hey tripping on bricks release a song but like hey like there's this video that you're really in in tune with and that you're very you're very interested in and then just oh wait a second this is my song by the way <laughs> yeah um it's a TikTok's a weird one, man. Yeah. I, I saw that in the early phases, like when it was just kind of transitioning over um, and it wasn't very popular yet. And I was like, this has a lot of the feel of Vine. I, you know, I, I have a feeling exactly that this, could, this could really take off. I think, you know, I think a lot of people, I'm, you know, I'm not special in thinking that, but like um, I, I did see it as kind of like an opportunity to start um, like making videos. So I, I did like, make a couple of goofy ones a while back and then didn't really see anything grow. Um, so I kind of jumped ship and didn't think anything more of it. Um, and then obviously like it exploded and I, you know, I, I downloaded it like everybody else and it kind of freaks me out, honestly, the, I, I don't really like want to get too into the whole politics in China and things like that, obviously, but sure, yeah. um, just then, then with, all of that aside, the nature of how addictive that app is, is like, it's scary because it's the algorithm is what's making it that way. That algorithm is so unbelievably good. It's fascinating. Like the difference between like mine and my friend's feed. I was just looking at him one day. I was like, wow, that is very much him and things he likes to see. And my feed is totally different. And then, you know, you look at somebody else's and it's all puppies. And then, you know, somebody else's might be all like Star Wars prequel. Right. Movies, you know what I mean? Like, and it nails that down fast, which is uh, that sort of direction is kind of have, uh, you know, been trying to apply some of the marketing stuff that I'm like doing online. I'm just trying to figure out like algorithms are the way this is going to go. Like the sure. way you're going to be successful in music, in my opinion, is algorithm based. Like, well, hey, you gotta have really good music. I mean, maybe wow. not. Yeah, maybe not all the right. time anymore, based on some of the top chart songs. But um, <laughs> you know, I think I'm but, on the same page as you. Are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's plenty. There's plenty that I look at myself and I'm like, you know, why am I spending time like writing lyrics that mean something? <laughs> when right, that right, has right, million, right. Million billion streams. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's totally a lot of it's algorithm based and I think it's headed that way. And TikTok's a perfect example of like how good an algorithm can be. And I like to think that Spotify and others are not right behind them with that same type of AI, yep. um, is, you know, I, I think you'll be behind if you don't try and play into that. So I've been spending a lot of time in addition to like writing, um, researching how the various algorithms work and how to you know, play them. A lot of people like to say like hacking the algorithm, you know, you're not really hacking it, but you're just um, leveraging yourself. Right. Yeah. You're just, leveraging yeah. You're just like you seeing how it works. Like, you know, TikTok, for example, has like, um, you know, th the goal of those algorithms and many like it are to keep you in the app as long as possible. So if somebody is watching, so, you know, if somebody's watching your video and stays on it for a while, it's likely to maintain, you know, it's, it's going to tell the algorithm, Hey, uh, you know, somebody's staying on this video, they're not swiping past it. And, you know, God forbid they close out of the app from it. You know what I mean? Like these right. are all, all those little actions that you do are sending signals to them. And it's like, okay, they like this. They don't let's keep them on the app longer because they like videos like this. And it, I mean, it's so advanced. So I've been trying to do a little bit of that with our music um, and at least the release of things coming up. So like um, 
I guess if some, if, if those that are paying attention to how we do releases and things like that, um, have some like marketing awareness, they'll probably notice that I'm implementing some of those tactics and things that I'm doing going forward. Um, and it's, it's definitely adjusted how I'm planning to release things. Um, yeah. cause like it's, it's a new world, you know, so to, to play the same old game where it's just, you know, album every two years, play the cycle. I think that that world has come and gone for the time being. I mean, maybe there'll be a place again where you release an album and then you wait patiently for the al- the artist to write another one for two years. But I think that ship is sailed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I couldn't agree more. I mean, and it's it's things like that that you have to think of, like whenever you're leading an organization, like you're leading people, um, and and they expect something from you. You gotta you gotta think it that way. You gotta think tactically. Um, it's awesome too. Like content's hard to produce. Like it is oh, yeah. like, content is not easy. Like you it's think expensive. You, it's expensive. You got good ideas. It's just, how do you format it? What's the idea? How is it going to go from start to finish? Um, and it's all project based and it's, it's things that mm-hmm. people don't think of. Like, for example, Barstool doesn't post a video for one day, God forbid people would go crazy. And, but oh, that, yeah. that content, man, is hard to produce. Um, so on those same lines, I want to talk to you as a, like a leader of what you're doing at Driven on Bricks. Um, and then we'll get into obviously the new release that you guys are coming out with on the 18th. Yeah. Um, so first off, like what's, what's it been like for you, um, you know, being the guy in the band that you, you do everything you put, you put the, you put the weight on your back and you go, dude, what's, what's that been like? Uh, kind of learning more about things that like are a little bit out of your wheelhouse. It's not like playing a guitar to learn a TikTok algorithm, right? No. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man, that's, it's a whole, um, it's so ingrained in my life now that this is just something that I'm like going to do that. I don't, I don't think of it too much of as like an additional thing anymore. I mean, it does weigh on my plate quite a bit, but, um, I mean, I know this is so cliche, but they used to always say like, you know, if you love what you're doing, it doesn't really feel like work. It's you know, probably a poor paraphrase, sure. but, um, yeah. no, yeah. but yeah, I, it really does feel like that. Um, I've, I've felt like I'm really kind of doing what I want to be doing. And even though it's a ton of stuff, it's, uh, it's worth it and I enjoy it. Um, and I, I like learning about this kind of stuff too. I'm pretty fascinated by all the online stuff. Cause my roommate in college was a uh, computer science major and he was yeah, yeah. into that stuff. So it was like kind of interesting to hear him talk about it. And I, you know, I was a business major, so I knew nothing about it, <laughs> but yeah, like the, the leading of the, the group is a, is its own challenge. Um, obviously like I kind of took that torch because, um, I think I was just like maybe most equipped for it at the time. It was like very much uh, a path that I had laid out and like, I knew for sure I was going to do, you know, like I'm going to do this. I'm going to be successful in this. And I'm like manifesting that, you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I spent like a fair amount of time learning and things like that about and, you know, really digging into how to do this and studying other people. And I think that just put me in a place like by the time we were really, you know, gigging and playing together and writing music. um, I think it just kind of put me in a place where it's like, all right, well, you already know this stuff. Like you kind of handle it. And like somebody needed to do it, that kind of thing. So it was, it was never a like, you know, like let's, you know, vote him into the chief position. Cause like, you know, we're, we're all still bandmates. Like, I've very much just tried to keep it as like a separate thing. Like when I'm with the guys, like we're just a band, we're just musicians, we're playing music, we're enjoying ourselves. And then I put on another hat sometimes. It's like a sociopathic yeah. thing. I yeah. just like put on, put on a different hat and be the manager, which I do have to do sometimes. And yeah, you know, I look forward to the day when I can kind of hand that off and, and be like, just be an artist and just write and do that. But, you know, I'm not sure at what point that comes where you really can let go of that. Cause I'm not, I don't know if I'd ever really let go of like the reins of myself and yeah. my finances and yeah. things like that. I do think you need to be like smart in a, um, you know, you have to be intelligent, like through all your business decisions and you have to pay attention to things like that. So, I mean, yeah. you can't totally hand it off, but I am looking forward to the day where I can be like, you know, when are we playing and ask somebody sure. else and they're sure. like, Oh yeah, yeah. You guys are booked for these days. You're going to the studio then. I handled all this, you know, like they handle all of the yeah, dates yeah. and things like that. I, I do look forward to that day, but it's a task to keep, you know, four horses not pulling in different directions, yep. you know, cause we're, I mean, we obviously we all have opinions. We're all creative. Um, and it, you know, it just comes down to like what's best for the group usually. Yeah. Um, and that's wow. kind of how it's, how it's gone. I think we've, 
we've kind of managed that well, especially post school too. I think we kind of like during school, it was like everybody was kind of on the, on the same page, you know, we're, you know, we're playing, we're trying to do this. Maybe we'll hit it. We'll get lucky, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the back of my head, I always knew like, I'm doing this, like regardless right. of what happens, this is going to be a thing that I make sure that I do. Um, and I think now that we've like graduated and things, um, and kind of gotten into the real world, it's one of those where I'm like, like, this is a business. This has to be a business. The right. art is, is certainly a sector of it, but there is a business portion of this. There is a reason that we post the way we post. Sometimes there's a reason it, there's a method to a lot of this, you know, yep. and like, it can't be as lackadaisical as it used to be. So those are the times when it gets kind of, kind of difficult to have to put on that hat and be like, Hey, you know, we can't do that. This is how we're doing this. This is when we're doing that. I, I, I don't enjoy that portion of it very much. Um, but it has to be done, you know, otherwise the horses will never run the same way. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more, dude. Um, and it's something too, man. It's what people see on the front end is not what happens on the back end. It's not as no. like, um, people always say, it's like, Oh, it's so cool that you get to record podcasts. It's like, well, you know, uh, it is awesome. Don't get me wrong. It's amazing. I love doing it. It's, it's something that's been so cool in my life that I've had the opportunity to do. Um, but at the same time, like there's scheduling, you got to make sure everybody's on the yeah. same time. You got to put up the episode in a good date. You have to plan for, okay, who has this post that day? Or how are we going to strategize to have this? Or what do we need to do right now as a team to reassess? Um, right. There's things like that, dude. So, I mean, it's, it's a hat that I, I have to wear too. Um, you know, the thing is I'm, I've been re- really blessed with an awesome team that, just supports me in whatever we do. Um, that's same down for the ride. They're just like, you know what? Listen, we trust you, um, man. And yeah, that, that's that's a good thing to have like yeah. addressed too. Yeah, like we had to we had to have one of those moments like early this year. It was one of those like, this is the vision. Like this is something I've like hardcore planned for. Sure, you know, and like this is the path that we're, we're the the ride has gone. Like we're we're either along for the ride or we're not. You know, yeah. like it's. It's not one of those hard feelings things where it's just like, this is, you know, we're, we're 23, 24. It's, it's a business now. Like it's, right. it's time to like really do this otherwise, because the lackadaisical things don't work anymore. And that, that's the part that's, that's tough, you know, but it, having a good team makes a world of difference. I mean, like they're, they're all awesome at what they do. Like the, I mean, Evan's an awesome meme maker, which we've discovered <laughs> recently. Like he's, he's been crushing, um, I'm trying to get him to do reels because we were all hugely into Vine when we were kind of growing up. Dude, that was my thing. I love Vine. Yeah. Whenever, like just kind of going back to the TikTok thing, dude. I was like, that's why I was like, I can't get into this TikTok thing because I loved Vine yeah. way too much. <laughs> I think that was like the that was maybe how I had that early red flag. Yeah. I was like, this is bad. I knew how addicted I got to that other thing. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. do this. Yeah. And I'm not typically one that like gets soaked into an app like that i didn't even have social media until college like i I think i got a smartphone like the end of my senior year or something like that of high school yeah so i've never really been that into it but it is uh it's interesting i mean it's part of the world i i kind of keep it and have to do those things because of um like because of the band i'm not so sure that like if um if we weren't a band or i wasn't doing this full time i don't know that i would engage too much in the social media thing because that's I mean, it is cool to keep up with people and things like that but i think a lot of times it's just like more bad than good comes from it just and i don't a lot of people like to think that the big tech companies and like the zucker i mean who knows what zuckerberg's really like but um like yeah. a lot of people like to think that the guys that run these and the people that work for google and facebook and instagram are all um are all kind of like forcing people into these arguments and they're like they're malicious you know I I think that what's really going on is it's a nature of the way the algorithms present themselves. Like they know that people are likely to stay on the app and engage more when they end up in echo chambers. So they put more people like that together. They end up, you know, echoing each other and talking politics back and forth and back and forth. And they know if there's a controversial headline that ends up on someone's feed that doesn't agree with it, they know that's going to get engagement, hence ad dollars. And I don't think that it's like them maliciously being like, let's divide people. I think it's more or less just an algorithm being like, what gets attention? The same way that mainstream and legacy media has like shifted to clickbaity type titles. I mean, because they have to, like, if you see a New York Times headline 
that's cut and dry. And then beneath it, you see a Buzzfeed headline that's like, you'll never believe who got this artist pregnant. You know what I mean? Like, right. You're going to, you're going to click that one just because of the headline, even if it's crap inside of it. Um, so I, I'm not sure how healthy it is. I don't, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of different opinions on that. And I'm not one to like hate on anyone for doing things like that. I just yeah. think that it's, I think it's, it's something that's... you should be aware of. I think it sets unrealistic, uh, unrealistic expectations too for yourself, um, especially yeah. too when you can put anything on it. Like you can put a filter on anything. You can put like you can shape up anything that you want to. And yeah. I mean, man, just from like a a body image standpoint, it's like, yeah, that's you a really have good point. To, you have to take it in strides. Like you have to take it with a grain of salt and understand that like these things are getting posted these perfect women these perfect dudes that have these insane abs that are all this and all that man yeah like i've seen the same people in person and it's they're a person like that's who they are Yeah, exactly they're not this glorified oh i'm this i'm that i have a million yachts i have like they might but they're just a person at the end of the day um and i think that's the the relationship that you have to have with it has to be healthy Oh, for sure. Really like understanding the underlying themes that happen with because of it. Um, mm-hmm. So speaking of releases and what you guys are doing going forward, obviously you have to wear a bunch of hats and you have to plan for, um, you have to plan yeah. songs. You got to write the songs, right? And then you got to plan for it. Yeah. What is going on now and how, what's the next direction for Tripping on Bricks and what are you guys going to see out of this new music you're creating? How is the creativity spurred throughout all this? And tell us a little bit about the single if you can. Um, okay. Yeah. That was a lot of questions. Yeah. A lot, <laughs> lot there, I'll try but i uh, um, got to try and answer as best as I can. Um, yeah. So like the single it's, um, that's coming out is I think the start of a different form of tripping on bricks in that like the music is similar but the direction of like how we're going to release how we're going to interact is a little different um and then another weird thing about it too is a lot of times like when you're writing um so i write like 99 percent of our music so um when i when i write a song it's it's so long before that song ends up in the world that um like I I could be in a totally different mindset then. So like releasing a song called strung out like now is a weird thing. Like people like, Oh my God is, you know, is Ridge on drugs? Like what's going on. But in reality, it's like, I use, I very much use my songbook as um, therapy. I, we talked a little bit about that last time, how I like, it's a therapeutic thing for me to um, just kind of like, I don't think about it too much while I'm writing, but to some extent I do like I'm writing something knowing that like, thousands of people can literally hear exactly what I, you know, and sometimes I, there are double meanings to things for sure. I'm not just like always airing exactly what I think, but um, like I'm saying things and opening vulnerabilities um, to a lot of people, you know, like the album, the album got, you know, I don't know, however many thousand streams. So like, that's a lot of people that knew exactly or heard exactly what I was going through in school you know like that's just that album was very much just a a place in time and a coming of age i think um and so the new stuff is um kind of settling into right now um so it doesn't seem like that because of what i'm like the one that's coming out right now is obviously like a reflection of however many months ago because that's when it was written um but i've been really mindful at least lately about trying to write um write really what I think I'm not writing for a band anymore I'm writing really what I think you know like it's Mm -hmm. something I've thought about a lot I'm it's been on my mind and it's like if I were going to tell a therapist something what would I say um so I've been doing a lot of writing like that which is kind of um it's kind of changed the style a little bit too I think uh this one is sort of up the same alley um it was this actually this song actually came out of just uh, Nick and I were goofing around and he was in the bathroom and I was playing a riff and kind of like humming a melody. And he was like, what is that? And I was like, it's nothing. I was just messing around and then, you know, turned it into a song thereafter. But okay. yeah, the, um, so, so I guess some of the new stuff's um, like not genre wise, but the way it's being written is different, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's maybe a little more 
not to say the old stuff wasn't genuine because it was you know a lot of those were like extremely genuine and personal songs but this stuff is like I, I don't know I feel more connected to it in a different way and I know that's kind of like woo woo stoner musician thing to say but I really do like yeah. I'm, I'm really sitting with these and I'm like saying exactly what I feel in the moment yeah so I, I hope that they're perceived well I think that the oh shoot did it just drop us out it just no 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 you're still in there no you're still in here you're all good that's weird yeah sorry just cut out i'll get no problem um yeah yeah i think the um the new direction is going to be kind of just um more more consistent um interaction with the audience but also like a very genuine version of it Um, you know we're not we're not putting on any you know masks any i mean we are we're literally putting on masks all the time now but (laughs) It's, you know, I think um, when I was in school and like really starting all of this, I don't know how everybody else feels, but um, I personally was like kind of trying to project something that I wanted to be rather than who I was a lot of the Mm -hmm. times in the music. Um, So I'd be like writing like, man, this would be a cool rock song. Like the gen, the lyrics very, we're still very genuine and things like that. Like, yeah, this would be like, this would be a rock riff. Let's do that. You know? instead of just like kind of letting it come to me and be like, this felt good to me in this moment. So it's like a bigger risk, I think, to do something like that because, um, you know, I'm not as worried about marketability sometimes when I'm doing things like that. Yeah. Uh, but also I think that the rewards higher because if, um, if people like it, then like they really liked a piece of gen- what was genuine, genuinely used. So I, that's kind of what I told the guys when I've been like spending, I spent, all of quarantine writing. And I mean, yep. I got, I have a ton of stuff built up at this point to try to sift through and get recorded. And that's, I mean, we can talk about that too, how we've kind of adjusted our yeah. recording process too. We've got like a new team kind of put together, but I, I spent that time like really digging into um, to what I really wanted to write about and told the guys kind of early on, like, look, this new stuff that I'm writing is like very much, something that I just wanted to write and if it flops I it flopped because I didn't because it wasn't good you know like and I'm okay with that but it it it's just going to be pure so yep. that was the you know that's always a risk you take releasing stuff but um I think that the stuff coming you know after this one and for the next 12 months on our way to album number two I think is going to be um something people can really get behind yeah man uh, I mean and I'll I'll bring up something, you know, just you see you because you you elaborated on how you wanted your music to be genuine. Um, I will not forget. I can't even remember what that bar was. Whenever you guys here had your album release, the blue something, right? Um, uh, the white mule. White mule. That's what it was. Yeah, man. Um, oh, I could talk about that night forever. Man, that was so cool. I have never been electrified in a room like that, whenever long way home played, dude, I, I was sitting there and I was in disbelief that you guys had came on the show. I was like, I had, I was talking to these guys. Like these were the guys that I was talking to. Yeah. Like, who am I to be able to talk to these? I mean, man, it was a point that like, it was probably one of the most proudest moments of my life. Cause I sat back and I was <laughs> like, wow, like, this is what this is all about. Like, this is what STS is like right here. That's a representation of what we do. And that means a lot, man. Well, and, and it's the honest to God truth. Um, I, you know, I had a few drinks that night. I was just <laughs> relaxed, having Same. a great time. Um, and man, it was just so powerful to me. And I've always, and I hadn't told you that because I wanted to save it until we had another conversation, especially too. helps that it's recorded. Um, yeah, but, man, it was I can't tell you guys to our entire community. I cannot tell you the electricity that was in that room. I mean, it, it, yeah, dude, that was something else. I mean, it's, and even as a, like, even being on stage, I've been on the stage a lot of times, you know, like some shows feel better than others. And I've felt different energies. That's a real thing. Like to, tapping into the frequency of a room is like a man. real important part of, Rich. of uh, being able to gig. That room was different, man. Like I, I, was I don't know how to describe to it. I was looking to my right. I was like, could not believe how many people were singing word for word every single song. And it was just, it was so cool to me because I was just like, it was unreal. 
this is amazing. Like, and it was There's so much love in the room yeah. too. I, I think that was a lot of that feeling too. It was like the people, because so many people were like singing the words and like the album had come out like two weeks before that too, yep. which is crazy because obviously some of these people knew the words because they'd been at shows before, but like some people didn't, you know, I, we don't play all of those at every show. Right. It's like some people knew the words to those songs just because they'd listened and in two weeks they went out and saw it. And it was just a lot. You could really feel the love in that room. Like I loved everyone there so much. Like, yeah. I was trying to pour out every ounce of that and everything that I felt recording it in the last four years of like really feeling all of I tried to capture all of those feelings that ended up in that album and like put it on that stage. And I think that it was like just mirrored back, you know, like I, bet I cried. I, I don't know if you remember feeling. that, but I cried during uh, when we did the little encore thing and I came yep. back out and did wallflower because yep. everybody just like popped up the phone lights and the whole, it was so cool. I've, I've like, I, I know we talked like briefly about this earlier about the manifesting thing, but yeah. um, I've envisioned that. And I think visualizing is really important, but I've like visualized that moment so many times, like just looking out at a crowd and seeing those little white lights go back and forth. Like I've always wanted to see that. And then it happened and everybody was like singing the words and I had to like step back and kind of, uh, you know, tear man, up. And it's just poetic. My throat. It was so beautiful. Poetic at that point, man. I mean, I was there and, uh, you know, I brought some of my buddies that I've been friends with for forever. And I was like, guys, um, I was, and they all, you know, they all worked at the bar with me and they all had seen you guys on the show before. But we sat there and they're like, yeah, they're like, yeah, we're going to hang out here. And then we'll probably go over to the bar for a little bit. I'm like, okay, you guys do your thing. I'm going to be here. They did not leave. They stayed there the entire time. And they said, wait a second. Oh, I forgot we were going to try and go somewhere else because they were just locked in man and they were like i cannot believe that you were just talking to them on your podcast like nothing and man it was just such a beautiful poetic moment that i just sat there and i was just like wow yeah. like you're and not kidding man it was amazing that it was surreal for you guys and i bring that up i bring all that up because the the emotions of that night and how genuine it was and the energy in that room um it was something from your first album that I thought you guys perfected. And it's just awesome to hear that you guys are even, you're, you're pushing that limit. Like it's, that didn't satisfy yeah. you to, to the degree that you wanted to. And you wanted to put up music that was even more genuine. Um, yeah. I think that's powerful stuff. I, I, I appreciate that, man. You know, like the, I, I don't know how to explain that night better than how you did. It really was, there was like a weird electricity in the room that like you really only get to experience that if you're in the room, which yeah. is, or really describe it if you're there which is it was really cool i i'm glad that that night happened because after you know after that this whole pandemic happened right. so like we right. we kind of got a taste of that like it was so sweet you know it was like it's like heroin just for a moment yeah. and then and then the pandemic and then you can't do it again you know it was it was so weird to have like that high and then that low that fast yep. between those two i mean it was like we'd, we'd had two sold out shows in a row. Um, what, the next one was in Wrightsville beach with the blue footed boobies who are awesome. Yeah. They're sick. I know, I know, I know them. They're yeah. incredible. Yeah. They're amazing. We were blown away by them and played, you know, like a sold out show with them. Um, and we were planning on playing another one with them. I think in March or May, I don't, you know, <laughs> whenever it was, but we had another one we were planning to play at the white mule and we were stoked and <laughs> everything comes to a screeching halt. So I think um, that that moment, at least that night, um, gave me a, a taste of something. It wasn't one of those where I'm like, I have to get more. Like, it, it wasn't like that. It was one of those where I kind of had this, um, like, if I never get to do that again, it's okay. Because I really got something yeah. special that, that night. And, it, you know, there's nothing I can do to, like, thank everybody for all, everybody that came, everybody yeah. that was in the audience even the like production of that was a huge portion of it. Matt Buck did like an incredible job with sound and lights and smoke. And we had uh, Luke Reeves who's working really closely uh, with us now. And I've, I've actually like befriended Luke um, a lot more since then. And, you know, we've gotten pretty close and that's actually kind of the new direction of um, where a lot of the way things are getting written and produced. Um, which I think is unique and allowing it to stay part of what you were saying earlier, like, about us leaning more into that genuine nature um, is that like last time I had very 
like pure like ideas when I was doing them and they would be on my acoustic and they were a pure idea. And then by the time they got out of the studio, like it was such a fast process. Um, we enjoyed it, but like, we didn't have any money, you know, like we had, I don't, I don't remember like 12, I don't know, 12 days, something like that. That's maybe way too much. Um, but it was, it was a really short thing that we had yeah. to get this whole thing done. Um, including like lace and the other ones. Um, we yeah, had to do that whole thing was, a serious endeavor that was really expensive. So we, you know, we rushed through it and I was happy with what we did, but um, I think some of that initial, when you get an idea, um, so I've talked to some other writers about this and it's, it's sometimes similar. Like when you get an idea, you kind of feel like it's from somewhere else for a little while. Like it's yeah. not like you chant, like you're channeling it, but like it really does feel like it's coming from somewhere else. And to stay pure to that, I think is really important because that's like the purest form of it. Um, and so with some of the songs, they kind of skewed so far away from that initial genuine feeling that, um, that I like, I, to be honest with you, I haven't even really listened to the album. Um, yeah. I'd listened to it so much in the studio and just, and I just watched it go like further and further away from its original thing. And that's like, no, that's no one's fault. I don't want it to come off as like uh, holier than now. Like I, you know, I had this great idea and it got ruined. Cause that is not the case. Like every day, everybody did a fantastic job. Um, it was just one of those things where like, we didn't have the money to make it sound the way that I heard it in my head originally. Mm -hmm. So like we did the best that we could and the studio we worked with was fantastic and really nice to us. Um, Strawberry Skies, they were great. Um, but it just like, what I wanted was not achievable with what we had. Um, and which is actually really cool. I was, <laughs> I, I didn't think about this until um, the other day, Nick and I were talking about our last day recording it. It's like one of those perfect, um, first album and like coming up stories sure uh our last day there we were um finishing and like we we walked out to the car um we were testing it in my truck to see if you know see how it sounds in a car um and we listened to it and uh we looked at each other and we're like what do you think yeah you know should we change anything um and i went we can't we're out of money like right. <laughs> this is what it is we gotta yeah. go tell them it's good enough so we did. We walked in and we were like, yeah, this is, uh, this is good. And we, I mean, we were happy with it. Like, don't get me wrong. We were like not sitting in there like this sucks. You know? right, right, right. We were happy, but um, obviously we could have spent six weeks on it. Uh, but yeah, we had that moment where we kind of like, well, we're out of money. And then, you know, they gave us the master. And when I, like when I held that CD, it was one of these weird moments where I was like, wow, this is like four years of my life that like is now yeah. on a CD. And I've worked towards it. You know, everybody's worked towards it for a long time. And then we went to get in our uh, cars and head home. And Nick's like, I think I'm going to run out of gas. Let me check. <laughs> Doesn't turn over. <laughs> and I was like, oh, great. Okay. So I had $7 left, like, to my name. Yeah. Um, and the two of us drove over to, he had, like, a little bit on a Venmo card or something like that. We drove over to the gas station. Uh, he paid for a tank, like, one of the little gas cans. <laughs> He paid for that with what was remaining on his Venmo card. And then we spent $4 of my seven to get him enough gas to get him home. And then we spent my remaining $3 on Taco Bell. And we were like, what a way to finish an album. <laughs> you know, it was, right. right. It was just super, um, it was really pure. I don't know. Yeah. It, it felt good to kind of have the bottom because then everything from that is going to yeah. feel a lot better. Yeah in all aspects really. and you'll remember I mean, that and you'll laugh man it's gonna be something that yeah. you joke about one day and you're just looking back and you're like man that don't do. i mean it. at the same time like wow i learned so much from that yeah we laugh about that a lot we were yeah. chatting about it the other day but that was kind of the what i was going towards is that um we're working a lot with luke now who's um so he's he's working with us kind of on the front end producing it um so like as i'm writing it like i'll have like a really you know a really full idea or something right and i'll take it to him and we'll kind of develop the arrangement together um and like try to get as pure as possible what i had in my head so i'll be like man i'm, I'm really hearing like a beat like you know and then he's like okay blah, 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 blah. and he just does it all right there so we have a really clear demo of what i initially thought typically and then everybody comes in and kind of paints you know paints their parts and so like if i'm like okay solo here kind of hearing something up high like in this part of the neck to start and nick can just pop in and be like write something 
crazy fast, you know, and he, yeah. he's, he's an incredible asset on the guitar. I mean, oh, I can only imagine. Watch, watching him write like that has been, has been really fascinating to me to like, see how quickly he can write riffs that are really good and solos that are really good and melodic. Um, and so like, we've been working really well together doing that. Um, and it's been like a weird dynamic too, for us to not be able to see each other all the time. Cause like, mm. um, you know, we've been all quarantining for various, various like health reasons and things like that. So, um, like Evan, we, we weren't able to see, see our bassist for a while. Um, and so Evan was just doing this stuff from home and he like, he crushed it. He just listened to kind of what we were playing, recorded it into his, um, into his little interface that he has and sent it off. And it was, I mean, it was killer. And then we got, um, we got Harper to come up and do drums one day. And, you know, we, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to do it now that we have to be you know, socially different, distant and more careful. And, yeah things like that. So that's changed the process a lot, but it's, I actually think has made it a lot more pure um, to the initial idea so that it's not too rushed, you know, like sure. it's not, everybody's immediately together to like, just try and figure it out on the fly. It's been like, here's the, you know, here's your template. Let's play within it. Yeah. Here's the um, mold. And like, it's, right. Right. Yeah. And it's, 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 I think been a good starting place for us. And then now we're, we've started working with um, Wolfgang down in a, uh, Charleston he he did um all the Susto stuff and he's done some I guess band of horses there. I mean he's he's an incredible wow. producer I don't know if I don't know if you've come across his work before but um, I'm not band of horses some good stuff I mean I don't I don't know that he's I just know that's like one of the things he was working on yeah um, but uh he's yeah he's an incredible producer that like frankly is probably out of our league um but Luke knows him really well and um we went down there with this one that we're releasing next Friday um we went down there with, with this song and um i got to know him and he's a really awesome guy yeah. and he kind of kind of hit it off and um i'm looking forward to working with him more we've got some some dates set up this month and next month so and it's it, a lot's coming I, awesome, if anything's man. if anything good has come from this pandemic it's been that like i sat with a guitar and like a little microphone for st- five months and record six however long it's been now six months and recorded a bunch of stuff so now it's just a matter of like getting them in the studio right which is which is a great place to be in you know i I hate that a pandemic had to happen to like force me to sit down and really pour some stuff out but like yeah i think for for a lot of people that pause has been um it's it's been important it's almost like a everybody got to kind of take a breath it was like the moment between breaths like when you take a deep breath you breathe. i've been trying to do like a lot of breathing stuff lately yeah like when you take a deep breath in and the deep exhale like you notice like at the peak right between breaths there's like this moment of like really mindfulness um and i think that that kind of moment like there's like that brief pause but it was like a pause for all the craziness that was going on right um, and everybody was like whoa like lifted the veil of all the kind of things that because everything was moving so fast, nobody's really paying attention. Like, you know, like corporations are doing what? Like yeah. people are doing this. We're doing what to this environment? We're doing, our, our cities are producing what? Why can't we see the mountains from LA? Right. That's weird. Should we normally be able to see them? You know, like it was like one of those moments where the, the veil was sort of lifted and everybody kind of looked around to and take a look. Yeah. It's like pause. Oh, I'm not like rushing to work. Things are okay. Let's assess my relationship with my family let's assess mm. like it was one of those where you're like you're not busy like, right right let's, right, right let's right. figure out yourself you know it yeah. caused everything it was like a psychedelic trip for the world yep and dude that that's that's something that's been you know um big for me during all this uh this is uh, 2020 if if it has done anything to me it has helped me learn more about myself than I ever thought I would like ever. Um, yeah, man. It, it really took that equation of being your own best friend and just up and up a notch and saying, all right, figure this out. It's been tough for people, man. I have heard, like I was talking to some old buddies and we were, I think I was up watching a movie or something like that. And we were all just hanging out watching a movie. And one of them looked over and it was like, do, do we want to talk about just like how tough this year has been like and he didn't say like yeah. how how terrible it's been he didn't say how much it sucked he didn't he didn't put this like oh bad just because of the coronavirus no he said how like how hurtful and how how just hard this year has been um and started going through the emotions of like you know um 
feeling alone, feeling like that you're in the best time of your life, like your early 20s, you're ready to go, you're ready to go explore and you're kind of locked to it. Um, Opportunities are thinning. Um, Things that you want to go and do and go and accomplish are kind of on halt. Um, Things you had planned, uh, big events. Um, One for me, you know, graduation. (laughs) Um, Yeah, man. Oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't even think about that. So you, how did that go for you? I I didn't, um, my sister just graduated from Clemson. So hers was weird too. Watch the YouTube stream. <laughs> that, was a, that was about it. Um, but yeah, man, it, it was like, I it, hate that. It, it sucks and everything. Right. But my thing is though, is it's really taken me back from the, all right. So this is just like, this is a, a this is a special time. Um, what this has taught me is like, how do, how do I make myself healthy? How do I make myself happy? Yeah. Um, what, what's it truly like? What, what are my goals? Like, what do I really want to assess? Um, and it, it's just taken that up a notch and it's really made me become a lot more humble. Like I'm, I'm small, dude. Like I can't, I can't solve the world. I can't solve this coronavirus thing in two days. It's been six oh, yeah. months now. It doesn't seem like anybody can. And, dude, that's such an important realization. Right. That, like just that right there. I don't mean to cut you off. No, but dude. Th- no, that's like, that is such a, I think that that's important. So I just like wanted to highlight it because yeah. there's a, um, I'm probably going to misquote this, but there's, there's a cool Jack Cornfield quote. It's something like uh, 10 to the part of the garden that you can touch. Um, and I think that's like when things have gotten so ex- existential, like it's so easy to get existential angst right now. Like right. the world, the world is unfolding around us. Like it, you know, like it has forever, you know, the right. world has always been unfolding and it's just the nature of the chaos that we're in, you know, like that's, that's the nature of the universe. It's like constantly falling apart. That's just part of it, you know, like, but, because our lives get busy and because we like add structure and things like that, it starts to feel like, you know, like you start building on that foundation and laying bricks and working hard every day. The next thing you know, like you start to feel a little more settled and you're like, yeah, yeah, this thing, I've got a pretty permanent structure. This is fine. Right. You know, I've, I've got this, you know, I could do a lot. And then something like this comes along and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am this minuscule speck yep. in this grandiose existence like it's it's, like it's it's, you gotta you just tend to the things you can tend to your family tend to yourself you know like how many people how many are how many of us are like lying to ourselves every day about various things on the road you know just driving like that guy's an idiot like when you make the mistake um yeah those are those are the moments where you can kind of be like okay i'm lying to myself like that nobody else is in the car and like how many how many things like that should we be tending to before we start this, you know, grand opinion of like, this is how we solve coronavirus. This is who should be elected and why. Like, I'm not a politician. I don't, I'm not going to try to be. Obviously I have opinions and I try to keep knowledge of it, you know, and stay in the know, but like, I can't change that stuff. You can vote, but like, I can't change it. So what can I change is like how I interact with my family and like, Am I giving my dog a good life? You know what I mean? Right. Like little things like you can actually change stuff like that. Like, yep. And, and I don't know, but I think that's really important that you said that. It, it, and it's, it's something that it's just a realization you have to make because it's not saying, it's yeah. not saying that you can't contribute to help the world's problems. In no way is it saying that. Yeah, oh, for is, sure. I'm not saying that either. Right. But it, what, what it is saying is that like, just know what to contribute. Know like, know what worth right. you have and know what worth that you, you, want, you want. Honestly, you want your legacy to be like, that's it for me, man. Um, I, I started living for myself and stopped living for others. Um, and I think that is, it sounds like a harsh statement. Um, because what I do here is I, I care a lot about people. That's something about me. I'm a people pleaser. Yeah. I'm, I'm a yeah, dude, certified Anyone that knows you knows that, you know, right. like I'm a certified nobody's going to question you. And it's, I'm a certified people pleaser. Like that's the way I think about it. And it's, it's always been like that for me. But this year made me sit back and it's like, all right, wait a second, Brett. Like, it's great to help others. And it's, it's the fabric of what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like, I yeah. want to help other people. Like, that's, that's it. I just want to celebrate people and like lift them up and be at their shows and scream in their songs. Like, I want to be doing yeah. that. That's like, that's fun for me because I can celebrate their passion. I can celebrate what they're doing. Um, but at the same time, it's, I also know that my worth is established from me and like internally yes. what, what I believe and how I can contribute to that. It'll contribute to other people by the way you live and by the way you move and by the things you do to help and to, to give back, but also to just 
eyes forward, feet front, like focus, focus on what's ahead of you for the first, to put that as your primary. And then as you can help, don't, don't eat up your bandwidth. Don't eat up all this information, all this time, all this knowledge that you got on, okay, I need to do X, this, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. Yeah. It's, you got to live on your standard. Um, and that's, and it's, it's a tough pill to swallow. It really is, especially, to it this. Is. but it's something that has helped me sit back and I'm just like, okay, this makes a little bit more sense now. And I can, I can fully assess that. Right. And I can move forward. Like once 2021 and 2022. And honestly, my thing is what I keep thinking about is Christmas time of this year. This is yeah. going to be the most, I, I truthfully believe this is going to be the most togetherness that we have ever felt in our entire lives. Whenever Christmas comes, Christmas is a time of giving. So. Christmas is a time of celebration. It's going to be weird, but it's a time yeah. where we all reflect on our family and friends and Thanksgiving. And th- it's been a tough year. There's no, no way to say that simply, but that internal reflection that you've had and those realizations that you've made and those tough times that you went through over this year, it's just going to be that capitalization of, okay, you know, like we got this, we're, we're through this. Like this right. is a time of celebration we can, we can do that. Um, and to help others. Right. So it's right. It's yeah. A lot for me, man. It's just that realization and understanding of like myself, like my health, m- m- my intuition, my knowledge, my passions, like, they come first in my life. Um, but also too, it's like, that's also to not being completely set off from other people giving you opinions or other people giving you their sure. feedback. Um, sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of those things we treat um, like uh, for whatever reason, we treat a lot of that stuff as pretty binary, you know? Right. I, right. It's like either you're living for yourself or you're living for other people. And you know, like and that can be bad and that can be bad and that can be good and that can be good. You know, like, I think the reality is most, most of these situations are, it's, it's a spectrum. Like, obviously, tend to your garden. Make sure that you, your mental health, it's, you know, mental health awareness month or suicide prevention. All, you know, we obviously tend to yourself. But it, there's, there's a lot to be said about activism, you know? Like, if, if not for activists, nothing would change, you know? So, there is a spectrum a spectrum. And I think it is important. There, there are some people that are made for that. Um, I just think there also is an understanding that like people land in different places on that spectrum. And I don't think that it makes you good or bad to be in either place. Like just cause someone is over here shouting at the top of their lungs for something they believe in. And somebody's over here that doesn't want to say anything about something that they believe in. Um, I think both people can be, you know, everybody's different. Everybody lives in a spectrum, you know, Um, so it's, I think your own mental health is probably paramount, um, Mm -hmm. to a lot of this. Like if, if you're looking at the world and you're looking at social media and it's making you wildly anxious every day and you're, you know, obsessing over various things I mean, it's maybe time to take a look and say, okay, you know, I can't change a lot of things. I can contribute in various ways. You know, I can be myself and still contribute to something. Um, and so like that, I do think has, is an important element of this, that that's for whatever reason, even though this pandemic has, I think helped a lot of people look inward. Um, it's also caused a whole lot of, um, like divisive, just type of like very binary, like you're this or you're that you're this, you're that the whole, I, and I just don't buy that. I don't think mm-hmm. that that's how the world works. I think people are not that just typical binary way you know like everybody lives on a spectrum of life like it's all everybody has different different opinions on things and you know you can be wrong for sure but like that's the beauty i'm wrong every day dude i'm wrong yeah i'm wrong all the time that that's the beauty of opinions i'm i'm wrong in rambling for this long you know what i mean right it's just right it's okay and ridge dude hang on can i uh can i plug this in really quick yeah dude plug it it in um this thing's about to die, and I don't want to lose you. Oh, you're all good, dude. Let's see if I can get this to sit here. Sorry. Probably getting a weird angle on the camera here. Sorry. <laughs> you're all good, man. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to kind of just contribute back to that, man. It's, it, there we it, go. It is a, um, it's a weird setting to be in, but it also is a powerful setting to be in because it's, there is no norm. Um, no, this, this isn't normal. 
they like yeah oh know, man yeah norm, but this isn't normal like we haven't we haven't evolved to have you know coronavirus like it's <laughs> it's something that just happened and it's a challenge that we had to face um, right and it's the divisiveness that you that has been caused from it is it, it it's upsetting but at the same time what can we do about it like what what we can do what's right you know yeah treat people with kindness like people with that's kindness. that's what kind of how i've been approaching a lot of this stuff is like if you're taking that 10 to the parts you can touch to different levels like what can you do to impact the world and make it a little bit nicer you can be nice and hope that other people are. i know that's like that sounds so ridiculous and trite that's in so today's true. world but it, it really is like if everybody would take a minute and be like hey just like this pandemic thing, I'm going to take a breath and not um, chap that guy for doing something that I'm going to make a foolish. joke to my waitress that's out here working during the pandemic and just struggling to make her tips and everything because not a lot of people are going out to eat and trying to stay isolated. I'm going to be kind to her, right? I'm going to give yeah. her a little bit extra money because right. we're, what are we? Like we're all human. It's, it's, it's it, I know it yeah. sounds like a cliche statement, but again, man, it's, it's the truth yeah it's the golden rule you know like it gets forgotten but it really is like just yeah. treat people well it's yeah. the it's the only way that i think a lot of people are gonna go places you know like that, that stuff comes back to you too and that's maybe not why you should do it but like what, what you put out there i think you get back in you know tenfold who knows yep. but um if you're putting out good intentions and things like that and you're nice to people you're likely to have more nice interactions and i think yep. it's important to try and manifest important like good interactions with people and instead of it's easy to get into one of those you know like you, know, you can get defensive really quick and kind of like put on a shell and be like if this guy does this i'm going to address it this way yada yada and like sending emails like oh my god this guy's an idiot yada 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 like and maybe you think that in the moment but he was probably not trying to be an idiot when he sent the email you know right it's right like, we're all just you know we're thinking different things at different times it doesn't mean somebody's an idiot and then like it doesn't help you to project that guy's an idiot because right. someone is probably saying the same thing about you right at that moment and i'm guilty of it too you know i'll send an email and say the same thing like oh my god what an idiot why did he say it like that you know mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't do any good so it's like something i've tried to be at least mindful of and yeah. i'm glad that you're kind of doing the same thing yeah. with all of this it really has been a therapeutic thing and i know it's been so bad for a lot of people so i don't want to like talk about it in a great light because but this is a very big it's going to be a really big portion of our lives this is yeah. never it's nothing like this has ever happened our generation is coming of age in a time where like all the things that have typically been associated with coming of age are now not available like you're you're talking to people virtually it's like a it, i don't know there's there's a dis, there's definitely a disconnect and like though I feel like we're you know connected in this conversation I think a lot of that is because we've met in person and yep. I know you so like this whole virtual interaction thing is I think probably going to do a disservice to just general empathy mm. as well you know mm. Very I dumb. think it's harder to just like it's really harder to pick hard to pick up on people's um, intentions and yep. you know it I, I have trouble like just grabbing little ticks and things like that through yeah. virtual meetings you know I, I feel like so awkward a lot of the times yeah. when i'm on them just because it's like hard to catch cues yep 100 percent. it's hard to read a room whenever you're not in it <laughs> yeah yeah you're not kidding that's probably why the whole stand-ups the socially distant stand-up isn't working yep. right right <laughs> so weird and dude i think that's so cool i think that application is so i think it's just awesome seeing the ways that people are being creative to get around this whole thing you know Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Like, yeah, no disrespect to anybody that's yeah. like, trying to figure things out during yeah. this. Cause like right. everybody's trying to figure out a new way. No one is like, the person that creates an empathetic way to do this is going to be the person that's the right. next Zuckerberg, you know, right. some way to give a true virtual hug. Like you, your AirPods, like give a little vibration. You're like, <laughs> oh, I feel like a hug. Yeah. <laughs> or man, um, Ridge, we're going to have to cut it off here. Um, I wanted real quick before we end the episode. Oh I wanted, shoot! Hang on. Oh no problem. Oops. Cut out there. Sorry. No, you're yeah. Good, dude. Are we good? Yeah, we're all good. Um, it's spazzed. <laughs> uh, man, but as we kind of wrap things up, I want you just to kind of give a statement, um, like how similar to last time. Just what what do you want our community and your community to know, and things that you know, if it could be from the 
the shortfalls and the, the pitfalls that you have to just celebrating like what we got right now? Yeah. Um, I think the best thing that like, I, I hate to get preachy because it's easy to do and you know, I'm in no position to be preaching, but um, I think the best thing you can do with all of this is like truly roll with the punches. Like the world is punching everyone right now. Like try not to let it make you lay in bed and get down on yourself, you know, because like getting up and going and doing something that you really feel like this is a moment where everything, everybody gets to pause and say, what do I really want to do? You know, like what, what, what makes me happy and what would, what would make me happy to do for the rest of this like very finite and fragile existence that we have. I mean, cause this is, if, if, if this is anything, it's, a, it's another proof of how fragile this little reality is like, just like that, it can be gone. Right. It's like, do you want to spend those years, you know, loathing going to work and doing things like that? Or do you want to spend them really thinking about like, what makes me happy? That doesn't mean that you can't go work. And, you know, I think every you know, everybody should do things like that, but, um, definitely it's important to identify what makes you happy and then pursue it. You know, yep. like this is, this is the time to, again, I'm going to say it, tend to the part of the garden that you can touch. You, sure. can, you can't change the world right now, but you can change it slowly. Yeah. I can't, dude, I can agree with you more, man. Um, you just touch more and more of the garden until right. it, you know, until it grows. And once, once you have enough seeds planted, man, it's just watching the harvest grow, you know? Um, yeah, man. Man, uh, so as we end up this episode, guys, uh, we do something at the end of each episode, and that is read our mission statement, and our mission statement is as follows. This group is designed to be a constant, open communication between members to deal with issues that arise in everyday life. Whether they be fitness goals, personal goals, or life struggles, this podcast is designed to uplift all those involved. Dulcius X Asparis. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for having me on, man.